2012 Outback. She's never been what I consider a good driving vehicle. This new stabilizer was delivered to the house via FedEx for 122 bucks. Measuring 19.34 millimeter. Comes with a larger bushing. I'm reading 15.06. Okay, we're gonna start by, by undoing the end link. What happens, the stud will turn. So we're gonna put a five millimeter hex wrench in here to stop it from turning. Fighting quite a bit of rust. You don't want that Allen wrench to slip. Extremely slow. I think I may have to get new end links if I rain them. Letting the Allen wrench slip out about three times. I've got this where the, the Allen won't even hold it now. So it's constantly slipping. And I'm just going to pull this bolt out and remove the whole link. Okay, after our Allen wrench slipped about three times, it destroyed the end of this Allen or this hex key. This has to be held with this hex key or you will not get this off. So I'm going to have to buy new end links, which I probably should have figured on that anyway. At 65,000 miles and eight and a half years old. And it's going to be much easier to pull this bolt and install the new ones on the new rear sway bar than it is to mess with it because this has got thousands of miles on wintry road conditions and it shows right here. These bolts appear to be plated. I cracked that one loose a while ago. Yeah, these bolts had some kind of a plating on them on preventing corrosion. I mean, look at that. You can still see the shine on this. And this bolt is, is pushing nine years old. Of course, that goes inside the bushing, so it's not exposed. We're on the left side now. Okay, let's get into position on the other side where we can see the see the removal. Bushing comes up out of the lower arm. That should free it. The whole thing is laying on top of the exhaust pipe. Here we go. On the left side, you have a you have the bushing bracket. You have to negotiate on the on the far side of it. No big deal. And that's her. She's out. Okay, now you can. Maybe get a better idea of the size difference. I think going from a 15, as I showed you, and going to the 19, the difference was, uh, it may not look like much, but it's like between 30 and 35% more mass. Also, take a few pictures before you remove it. I was checking out the forms in my research on doing this job, and I ran across a couple where they were actually installed upside down. I just took a picture to make sure that the, the high point goes on top. The high spot right here where it ramps high, it's on the upper side. Uh, but they line up right on the money. If you could see it, of course it slid down. Right on, 
just perfect. And there shouldn't be any difference in the way these go. And you know that only goes one way. These bolts go towards the inside of the vehicle. And the bushings, the flat part goes against the back. Your round clamps go on this side, on, on the front, and they're split. So I get these in tomorrow morning, and we'll do a quick install on them. If you've got any questions, go ahead and ask in the comment section. These end links are Duralast. They come from AutoZone. They were, both of them with tax out the door was $49. I went to O'Reilly's first. O'Reilly's may have had a better quality product, but it took them two days to get it. I, I needed these this morning. At O'Reilly's, they were $45 a piece before tax. They were OEM import. And I asked him, but well, they're not genuine Subaru. He said, no, they're just, they're imported to OEM specifications. So these were half price. I don't know how important it is to get a genuine OEM. Uh, Subaru is a one hour drive for a one way trip for me. I'm not gonna go down there just for that. This does a this does a very basic function. Rubber bushing, looks well made, looks good and hard. Appears very tight and crisp in this movement here. So I'm okay with going with a $25 part on it. I don't know what a higher quality end links looks like, but all I see on this rod is two tack welds, but this rod more than likely penetrates a hole as a pin down through this first layer of metal, right down to the, to the bushing. Same way here, tack weld, tack weld. Let's take a look at the originals, but I really don't know how much stress is on these. We're gonna try them. Okay, here's the original off the outback. There are no welds around this. Or if it's a weld, it's a very small laser weld. It just doesn't look like it. There is some kind of a small ridge at the base of it where these have a tack weld. Looks like something I would do. These are actually in awful good shape for 65,000 miles and eight and a half years old. Still fairly tight. The old nut on the OEM did not have serrations on the flange nut. I just checked it. This has a locking flange nut. Check out the pattern. It's got a wave to it. That's kind of unique. I've never really seen that before. Usually they're just straight line serrations, straight line but at an angle. These have a wave pattern like a scale. Kind of cool, I think. Well, we know the stud goes to the inside. But we're hitting a hard stop there, so there's definitely a lock nut involved in that. That's a crimp nut, even though I can't see the crimp. When I said I didn't see any crimp, I was looking for a crimp on the on one of the flats, an indentation, which I didn't see any, but the entire nut is smashed. Both of them are. The entire nut's been squeezed this way just a little bit. When they squeeze this nut, this is a 15 millimeter nut. You can't even get a 12 point wrench on it. It's squeezed that much. You can get an open end. One way is very snug. The way they smashed it is loose. I really wanted that ratcheting wrench on there though. You can't let that Allen wrench slip out. You'll never get it tight if it does. And it's getting tight now. It's got a long way to go too. I'll fast forward this up. This is going to be very tedious. This is extremely tight. No, you have to hold the Allen wrench in there while you're doing this. This would have been a genuine bitch to do it in the car. That Allen has actually wallered out in that hole and I'm holding pressure all the time inward. Look at that. It acts like it's, it acts like that this part is not very hard but I'm getting them tight. Okay, I'm happy with that one. I'm starting to doubt the quality of my five millimeter. We're gonna go back with a brand new Weeha five millimeter. I think that might've been my bad on wallering that out. That Five millimeter I had probably should be thrown into trash. These are extra long wee hauls. 
about as good as you can get, I think. Now I'm getting some slop in that steel. That is soft steel. That stud really should be a little harder than it actually is, I think. So that might be the difference between a $22 part and a $45 part. But we're tight now. Okay, here's the old one. Bushing was on like this. I'll put it back on and show you. Kind of had this sleeve on it to keep it from slipping. Where this, the new one has a, a wider band, but it's a crimp. Looks like the depth of it's about an eighth inch, maybe three sixteenths. Keep it from sliding inward. Whole bushings look pretty good, really. I don't know if it's worthwhile or not, but we're going to put some Dow 4 on it. Definitely makes it slide. These were identical. I just went ahead and put an R on here for the right side. I know it came off the right side. It had a piece of OEM factory orange paint on it. I forgot to mention the wrench sizes. The the bolts and nuts are both 14 millimeter for the lower control arm where it goes through to hold the bottom of the bushing in place. And these cap bolts that hold the half circle in, these are 12 millimeter. I laid them out here and sprayed some arrow coral on them. Anything would be good, WD-40, anything, whatever you got, just some kind of a penetrating oil or a lubricant. Okay, after I got the end links on the sway bar, I went ahead and slipped it in here, didn't video it. it. I put it in the exact same way I took it out. I put it in from the right side because you got the tailpipe and the muffler over there to contend with. So you need to be on the right side and slip it, slip it over it and drop it down. And this one fell in without a problem at all. Went ahead and put the bolt in. It's just snug right now. And let's go on the other side and we'll do it. I did have to take a hammer and, and knock the, uh, the bushing sleeve down in there just like that. Just a small, some small taps. Because it's just the right clearance. That bushing will barely fit down in this upper A in this lower A arm. It won't go in up here. You need to start down a little low and kind of get it into position. It seems like it's just the right amount of space in there. That wrench will just hang in there will tell me if that bolt is spinning or not. The other one. Okay, that wraps that up. Now we'll take it for a test drive. And hope it's all worthwhile. You never know. But just from what I've read online, I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. Because this vehicle is the worst driving vehicle I've ever owned. I can't keep the toe in and the, and the four wheel alignment within specifications. Well, there it is. We just got back from the test drive. Huge improvement. As a matter of fact, I can't believe the improvement. And the vehicle constantly needed correction from overcorrection. Now when you come out of a turn, uphill, downhill, you just come out of it. There is no overcorrection. Any input coming out of a turn, it stays that way. It drives the way it's supposed to drive. Now I'm gonna show you what I did with the air pressure. Subaru says for these tires, which are OEM size tires, P225 60R17s, they're saying 32 PSI for the front and 30 for the rear. So here's what I did after a lot of research online. A lot of guys online are telling you to overinflate the tires to improve the handling on it. Uh, everything's been tried to get this out back. Even 19, the 2019s, there are people changing them to that oversized sway bar. Subaru has not upgraded from that 15 millimeter and they still haven't gone to the 19 millimeter so what i'm doing on tires this spec 32 in the front 30 in the rear i'm running 38 in the front and 36 in the rear these are michelin's uh, i think they're yeah michelin defenders they spec out at 44 psi max so at 38 on the front i'm 
I think I'm 15% under the max pressure. I feel like 15% is a pretty good safety margin to have to deal with. That might contribute to the better handling as much as a sway bar. I don't know. I did both at the same time. We put on the new sway bar and we aired up the tires. But in all fairness, the tires were not at 32. I'd pumped them up a couple of months ago to 35 trying to experiment with it. 